Welcome to Mr. Olden's explanation of the Great Dividing Range and the rain shadow effect and just how this influences the type of natural environments found here in Australia. This provides for us a prime example of the position and aspect factor that affects natural environments. The Great Dividing Range, also known as the Eastern Highlands, is Australia's most substantial mountain range and the third longest land-based range in the world. The range stretches more than 3,500 kilometres from the Juan Island off the northeast tip of Queensland, running the entire length of the east coast of Australia through New South Wales. Once it gets to Victoria, we see the range take a turn west where it ends at the Grampians in central Victoria. Now the range is extremely long, but it is also extremely wide. At certain parts, the range can span up to 300 kilometres wide. The diagram in front of us provides a really great illustration of how the rain shadow effect occurs. Water vapour is blown off the eastern coast of Australia inland towards the Great Dividing Range. What happens here is that it's provided with only one option and that option is to go up due to the great span of mountain that it's in front of it. As this water vapour travels higher in altitude, the water vapour begins to condense and form clouds. Now what we know about clouds is that the cooler they get, the heavier they get and when clouds reach a certain point, precipitation occurs. The mountains here are so high that clouds form, become too heavy and precipitate all on the eastern side of the mountain. Precipitation occurs here and what we see is that any rain, hail or snow enters the waterways on this same side of the mountain and just heads straight back out to sea or into underground water sources. Unfortunately for the western side of the Great Dividing Range, due to the fact that precipitation has occurred on the eastern side and no cloud has managed to make its way inland or to the west of the Great Dividing Range. This leads to a far drier climate and therefore influences which types of environment are found on the western side of the Great Dividing Range. This effect here is known as the rain shadow effect. What we'll do now is have a look at some Google Earth images to see this in play. We're going to have a look at the area surrounding the town of Kempsey in northeastern New South Wales. So again, we've got the mountains, the Great Dividing Range over here on the left, and we've got the water vapour blown inland off the east coast of Australia, like so. Now of course what happens to this water vapour that's been blown inland is that once it reaches the Great Dividing Range, it's forced to climb in altitude. Once it climbs so high in altitude that a cloud is formed and it has then become too heavy, precipitation will occur in this area. When we look at this image, we might notice a river that forms from the Great Dividing Range heading back out towards the sea. This is the Maclay River. When we take a panned out view of the area around Kempsey, what we can see here is of course the Great Dividing Range, but that the area around the Great Dividing Range is green and quite lush. Now the types of natural environments that we'll find around here are grasslands, wet and rainforests, heathlands, wetlands, and of course alpine environments. Now as we move a little more inland, what we'll find here are dry forests and woodlands, and we'll also find grasslands. However, unfortunately, as we move further and further west or inland, the scenery becomes quite barren. And we can just see that here as it begins to lose its colour. What we find there are arid and semi-arid environments. In a stark contrast to the town of Kempsey is the town of Cobber in central New South Wales. Looking around Cobber, it's very plain to see that the types of environments around here will be arid and semi-arid. It can be said that Cobber lives in the rain shadow of the Great Dividing Range. 
The difference between Kempsey and Cobber is only 873.5 kilometres. Now in that 873.5 kilometres, it's very interesting to see that such difference can occur. Now this image here is of the actual town of Cobber as it stands today. What we can see here is very dry soils and only low-lying shrubbery as the vegetation type here. This shrubbery exists as it has adapted over time to be able to survive on very, very little amounts of water. This image here is of the area surrounding the township of Kempsey. As we can see here, there's plenty of rich soil, there's moisture, there's greenery, and we can even see the mountains in the background. Comparing Cobber to Kempsey is a great example of how the Great Dividing Range and the rain shadow effect influences the type of environments found here in Australia. It can also be said that the position and aspect factor which affects the type of environments found is arguably the most influential of all. Thank you for listening.